Hi everybody, it's Jacob back again with our demo series on uh, Eagle. You can see here we're back with our in our um, Eagle uh, window here. You can see I'm using Eagle 6.2 Lite. Uh, if you have not yet downloaded your own copy of Eagle, you can go to the Catsoft website and get a free copy here. The 6.2 Lite is the current version. Uh, I'm working on a Mac, so keep in mind that many of my commands I'm using on Mac, but it's almost identical with PC from what I understand. So, anyway, in our first two uh, demos that we did, our first two tutorials, we uh, set up a, a pr demo project folder here, in which we created our demo rat, um, in which we built our first schematic, um, which uh, happened in our first tutorial, and then we took that same schematic and we turned it into a single-sided layout here. And remember, if you remember from our first couple series, if we double click on our project here, you can see here's our windows with our single sided layout, which uh, we tweaked for quite a bit. You can continue to tweak this as much as you want. And then uh, here's our schematic that we um, began uh, in our first tutorial, uh, which as you can see is fairly simple. Uh, so as we go back to our project here, we're going to uh, shut this down for a second here. And I'm going to show you uh, today in our tutorial series, we're going to go over how to make double-sided layouts. And I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do in our user interface here where we manage all of our various projects. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to do right now is in our demo rat, um, we've got uh, a project here for demo rat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this project the single-sided demo rat. Okay? So all I did is I renamed the original folder. And in my uh, demo project folder, I'm going to create a new project called the double sided demo rat. Okay, so we've got a single sided demo rat and a double sided demo rat. And as you can see, our double sided demo rat project is empty. There's no ability to see anything in there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight our schematic here. I'm going to press copy. And then I'm going to go find that double sided demo rat folder and I'm going to save our demo rat schematic right in there. Now as I open up our project and double click on our schematic you can see we've got a schematic already in our demo rat project right our double sided demo rat project but we've left behind the original schematic and uh, and our original PCB so now we've got uh, this project is saved right just fine but we can switch back over into our single sided layout version Let's shrink down this because I don't need it to be quite so big our single sided version and now we can um, do a new uh, PCB you can do this uh, all sorts of ways you can create new projects new folders drag and drop for example here I can go in here and take a you know something like this and I can just even drag and drop right and if you've got shortcut commands you can drag and drop I think all over the place. Um, I'm going to undo what I just did there, see if I can move it back here. Alright, move this back into that folder. Uh, oh, I probably put it in the wrong folder. Yes, I did. Okay. Alright, so uh, here we are. We're in our double sided demo route project. We've got a schematic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I did in the first uh, time, we're going to set up our PCB by pushing our board. Um, switch to board command right up there and it's going to ask me to create a new PCB from the schematic. I say yes and what it does is it pulls up a, a PCB layout window for us to work with. And I'm going to size it so that I can still get back to my schematic if I'd like. Here we are able to switch back and forth pretty easily and here we are we have all of our parts laid out. Um, we still have the same, all the same buttons, so I'm going to quickly switch to my modified um, uh, setting so that I can move all my parts around. I'm also going to switch to my grid so that I have the typical settings that I like to work with ready at hand. And I'm going to chop down our layout into a size that I know will um, work for me. Right, so I'm, I'm making the PCB about the right size for me to work with based on what I already know, zoom to fit. And here we are, we're, we, uh, we, we're much quicker to this spi space where we can begin to move stuff around. 
than we were before. Before I move any parts on, I'm going to set up my ground plane. Right, I'm going to isolate at 8. Yeah, this is where this can begin to come in handy here. Actually, I, maybe while we're on our poly command here, I'll show you some more of the tools that are available to us. Uh, as usual with the poly, we can select right angle or like any line. You can create wire bends in there. You have the ability to miter, so rounding the corners. We can also set the width of the lines that we're drawing. And then we've also got the ability to create um, different uh, patterns for it to work with. So uh, these are all um, advanced commands. So I would encourage you not to touch them unless you know what you're doing with them. And th it's easy to access all sorts of details on this. There's a help window here, but you can also go online and search the database that CADSOFT's already created. You can Google stuff. Lots of people will share details on all this sort of stuff. Right now I'm sharing enough to get you going, but these advanced sort of settings are something that even I struggle with and I have to look up. But it's it takes just a little bit of time Googling to find out what some of these things are or, or looking in help windows and searching forums. Uh, the isolate command is one that I actually use all the time. It's if factory setting is zero, right? But what I do is I always set it to eight. And what this does is it, it gives me more space around all the part pads. So when a pad gets placed in the polygon, you get a space between the pad and the polygon and this is what helps set that. So we set the isolate to 8, which is a good setting for when you get manufacturing done. It's above the minimum required for almost all manufacturers that I've seen. So that's what I do is I set it to 8 and then I just go to my corners and I set a big rectangle for my polygon to ground. So this is a ground polygon. Now the thing about double sided is that we've got basically we've got a top and a bottom of a PCB that we can run lines on. That's the difference between single sided and double sided. That's what the difference is if you didn't know. The bottom side is generally blue and the top side is generally red. And This is only inside this user interface for Eagle. Um, you can have obviously when you get a PCB manufactured um, the copper usually gets put underneath a layer of what we call um, solder mask. This solder mask covers up all the lines that we create on the PCB and leaves open the pads for each part. What this enables us to do is only apply solder to where the pads are and reduces the ability for us to create a bridge between two different parts by hiding all the lines that we make. Now, it's all, all these lines that we make, all the traces for our parts are created using machines. That's what the manufactured point is. So all of these traces come out and because of the precision of the machines what they do is we can now line up a top side and a bottom side because the computer doesn't uh, unlike a, a person when we create an etchable um, layout a single sided layout we can we can make double sided etched layouts but they're very complicated and require some precision and some experience and generally DIYers, we don't have the time or the energy or even the, the desire to put so much effort into creating double-sided layouts for etching, especially when you can get double-sided manufactured boards, which are much more reliable and much more um, appealing to work with for so, as little money as we can using some sources like Oshpark, Seed Studio, and other places like that. So what I'm going to do here is we've created a, a ground polygon um, which is on our bottom layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type again in here poly and now I'm going to go up to this window right here which says which layer we're working on. Right now we're working on the bottom layer. I can select the top layer and I'm going to create another polygon that mirrors the bottom polygon. Okay. Now currently because I just pressed poly this top polygon is unnamed. It has absolutely no connection to any of the parts on here. Whereas our blue polygon, which we created before, is connected to all the ground pads, right? Any, any one of these pads that connects to ground is connected to that blue polygon. Now to set this top polygon, as we go here, we can highlight the, the part here. Here's another quick tip that you uh, probably I haven't probably showed you yet. When we have multiple parts on layers on top of each other, for example, if I select here, I'm selecting the 
our po top polygon. Look at that. It's uh, it's on the top layer. But what if I wanted to select the bottom layer? Oh, I'd have to... Oh, there I got it. So I can move the top layer, and then I can get at the bottom layer. There's a couple different ways to get at that bottom layer without having to move the top layer. If I double-click... Oh, no, that didn't work. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm right-clicking to cycle through the parts that are available to me. So, for example, here, I can select the top layer. If I right-click... There, select the bottom layer. If I right click again, now I've selected the dimensions, which are all so close to each other that the it's maybe it's challenging for the computer to know which one you really, really wanted. Another way to do it is to before I've even clicked, I press my right click button there. Now I can go to next and next again. Now I'm on the dimension, now I'm on the top layer, now I'm on the bottom layer. And I'm just cycling through the options. If I go to my top layer here, now I can see delete polygon. I get all these different tools that will allow me different things to do. Um, here's a cool tool, the dimension tool. If I press dimension, look at that, it instantly tells me exactly how wide I am, right? And then I can leave that out there so that I can show um, a client if I'm working on something for somebody else, or even myself. Um, this this measuring tool, the dimension tool, is available down here on your, on your, and you can select all sorts of dimensions. I can figure out how far that line is apart from there. There you go, 0.55 inches. That's a bit silly for me to measure. Once I click, then it allows me to extend it out, and it'll show exactly that between that path. Now it's a useless measurement, but you, that's how the tool works. Okay, so here's the next thing I can do here. Um, I can name it. That's a, actually a fairly important tool right now for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select name, and right now it's got net six, which basically means it's the first net layer on, from our schematic that isn't being used. So there's no net six in our schematic, so it's just picked the first available net name that I can I can use. That's what this polygon is, is called. I can rename it now. I can turn it into net two, for example. And now whatever net two is on the on the in our schematic, which is I think this connection here between C1 and pin one, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so if net, I can turn it into net two or net one, which will connect our input with our first pin on our IC, IC th uh, pin three on our IC, um, right? So over here, pin three on our IC is connected to the input. We can turn it into that one, but probably um, any of those sorts of connections aren't going to be very important because it's only one connection. But there is a connection that connects at multiple points that may be valuable to have. Like our ground is connected to many, many parts on our PCB, our 9 volt also connects to several parts on our PCB. In some PCBs, it can connect to dozens of parts, just like the ground would connect to dozens of parts. So, many times when you have a manufactured PCB, you will find that the bottom layer polygon, the ground, it will be a ground plane, which basically means that it's a polygon that covers the entire PCB and will allow any of those parts that connect to ground to connect. And then on the top side, we will have a plus 9 volt or power ground, a power plane, or an input plane, or a, uh, you know, any 9 volt plane, whatever, whatever word you want to use, will be located on the top. So let's select the top here and name it plus 9 volts. I press OK. And now as I rat's nest, you can see it stays empty until I take our plus here, which is our 9 volt in, and I go like this. Now as I hit rat's nest, you see how the 9 volt now connects. I'll zoom in a bit here. Now it connects to all the rest of that polygon. That is awesome. Now any other part in our stash here, over here, of parts that are in our, on our schematic, will also want to connect to our 9 volt plane. And in the same way, we take ground over, right? rat's nest. Now you can see as I zoom in here, little blue lines that are connected to our ground pad. That's just fantastic. Wow.